I treat the, uh, the uh, Constitution the way, the way uh, laws, statutes have always been treated. We try to figure out what it meant when it was adopted. People ask me, well, you know, why, when did you become a textualist? What caused you to become a textualist? You know, it was always, there's always some weird thing, you know. I, I mean, I, when did you begin to become not a textualist? You have a text, you should read the text. I, I. <laughs> now, my, my philosophy was until recently, not only not weird, it was orthodoxy. Everybody you know, at least said that you know, the Constitution was that rock, that unchanging, fundamental document that means today what it meant, and it's our salvation. And that's every, every, now, they didn't always follow it. I mean, it isn't that, that, you, that you didn't have willful judges who would twist and distort it in the past. Yes, you, you will always have willful judges. But the difference was, in the good old days, they had the decency to lie about it. They would, you know, they... You have heard the phrase, the living constitution. The living constitution, that wonderful document that grows with the society that it governs so that it always reflects the best virtues of that society. Now that is, of course, not the frame of mind of a group of men who think there is a need for a Bill of Rights. I mean, surely the whole purpose of a Bill of Rights is precisely to, uh, to stabilize certain provisions so that they cannot be changed by a future and less virtuous generation. Originalists don't always agree. Brother, Brother Thomas and I, uh, uh, Clarence Thomas is an originalist. We, we will disagree as to what the original meaning was now and then. But we know what we're looking for anyway. And judges who are non-originalists, who think the Constitution means what it ought to mean, they go home happy every night. <laughs> really. They never make a decision they don't like. <laughs> I make a lot of constitutional decisions I don't like. I, I was the fifth vote on the in the flag burning case. My reading of the First Amendment is that it protects freedom of expression. So I said, if somebody burns his own flag, it's his flag. It, He's doing it to show contempt for the government, contempt even for the flag. He's entitled to express contempt for the flag. So I was the fifth vote. That didn't make me happy. I do not like, I used to say, bearded people who go around burning. <laughs> who go around burning American flags. And I came, and I came down to breakfast the next day, and my, my wife, the lovely Maureen, who, you know, is a sharp Irish tongue, is is standing at the stove humming stars and stripes forever. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh...